How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be optimizing the brand new 2023 update to Steam. Unfortunately they have removed the option to even roll back to the older version of the Steam client at this point so moving forward the new version of the Steam client is the only one and unfortunately as great as it looks it does come with a slight performance penalty as this version of the Steam client does seem to be a bit more resource heavy. So for those of you looking to get the absolute best performance possible from your games in this video we're going to be optimizing absolutely everything and making Steam as lightweight as possible alongside being snappier and and more responsive. Tired of seeing the activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the quickest and easiest settings possible. If a certain setting has not been covered in this video, this means that the setting is completely up to you and your personal preference if you want the setting on or off. By all means, if you do see a setting in which I'm turning on or off and you believe that you want to have that on for how you use Steam, by all means you don't have to copy that exact setting. But without further ado, we're going to jump into Steam and go through all of the settings as quickly and easily as possible. Start by navigating inside of Steam, head up to the top left hand side, select the Steam icon, then navigate down to settings. Well first of all, start off with the account section, head over to the right hand side to account details. Head over to the preferences tab on the left hand side. Not only will we be able to find all of the content filtering settings for both the store and the community in here which is really handy, but if we scroll right towards the bottom you'll actually be able to find the option for broadcast preferences. I like to hide all live broadcasts in store product pages as I have no intention of seeing any live streams that are happening when I click on a certain game in Steam. You might like this feature, I personally don't. Head up to the top left hand side once again to Steam, settings once again. This time navigating down to friends and chat. Towards the top we're going to navigate down to the enable animated avatar and avatar frame section in friends and chat and we're going to be turning this off. Once completed head over to the left hand side to notifications. If you want to turn on or off notifications and the sound from the notifications for anything with inside of Steam you can do so with inside of here by quickly and easily turning the flicker switch either on or off. And to improve quality of life on Steam under the notifications tab scroll down slightly to the Steam notification section. We'll be able to find custom Steam notifications which you can also set to be pushed to your Steam client or the mobile app when any of these events happen. You can turn them on or off so you can really curate what notifications you want to be receiving for any reasons. Heading back to the optimizations now, navigate over to the left hand side to interface. If you wish to participate in the beta client push out, you can choose to do so with inside of here, but do bear in mind most major Steam updates will reset many of your settings, so if you do run into big updates from Steam in the future, please do double check that your settings haven't been reset. We can then scroll down towards run Steam when my computer starts. This is personal preference, but I like to have this turned off, as if I'm booting my PC and have no intention of playing a game on Steam, or if I'm doing something else, Steam doesn't need to be running so I'm going to be switching this off for now. Then navigating down to enable smooth scrolling in web views, turning this off, selecting restart later. Enable GPU accelerated rendering in web views, off, restart later. And enable hardware video decoding if supported, off, restart later. This is based on my recommendation of not utilizing the Steam browser when in games. If you do notice laggy video playback when you are watching videos with inside of Steam though, feel free to turn these settings back on. Once completed, navigate to the left hand side to the library section. I would highly recommend enabling the low bandwidth mode, enabling low performance mode, disabling community content, do bear mind though that some of you that are using a lot of community content may wish to turn this back on. Then heading over to the left hand side to the download section. Download region should be set to the closest region as to where you are located. You can choose to limit your download speed if you have a rather congested or slower internet connection and you don't want to absolutely grind everything to a halt when you're downloading a game. It's a great option but if you do want the fastest downloads possible turn this off. Schedule auto updates is also a very handy feature for those of you on limited internet connections so definitely look into that if you don't have fast downloads available to you 24-7. Allow downloads during gameplay I like to have this turned off as if I'm playing a game I don't want anything congesting my network whilst playing and I'm happy to wait for the download to continue once the game is closed. A quick and easy way to speed up Steam or resolve any potential issues or slow download speed is to navigate down to the clear download cache section and select clear cache. This will more than likely automatically restart Steam and you will have to log in again but once completed that is a quick and easy way to fix any potential issues you're running into in the Steam client whether it be now or in the future. Game file transfer over local network is really handy if you have multiple PCs inside of your network which may already have the games you're looking to install on a different system without having to re-download them from the internet you can transfer them from one pc to another over your local connection avoiding any potential download limits slow download speeds or data caps 
That setting is personal preference, but if you don't have any other PCs you're looking to transfer over the network to, switch this off. For shader pre-caching, I would have both settings enabled. Next up on the left-hand side, navigate over to in-game. For the first option, we have enable Steam overlay in-game. Now I would recommend having this turned on with inside of Steam, so this is automatically enabled on all of the games in which you play. But for those hyper-competitive games such as CSGO or other really high FPS intense titles where every frame matters and you don't want anything interfering with your game, I would recommend turning this off on a per-game basis and I'll be showing you how to do that quickly and easily. Make sure this has been switched on for the entirety of Steam so it's automatically enabled for all of your games, then exit out. For instance, if I wanted to have the Steam overlay disabled on a game like CSGO, what you need to do is right click on the game, its properties, then select the option for enable Steam overlay in game and turn that off for that specific game. The Steam overlay will then no longer be running in the game, potentially causing higher input lag or running further background processes when you're playing. Same goes for the in-game FPS counter. I would only use this on games where you really need it, as introducing further overlays to any game, whether it be through Steam or other other third party applications will increase input latency. It will be a really minuscule amount, but I would avoid this where possible. And if you've had Steam installed for a while and do a lot of web browsing in the Steam overlay or just through the Steam client, I would definitely recommend looking to delete all of the Steam browser cache, cookies, and history just to clear it out to free up some extra space. If you're running into potential microphone issues with inside of Steam or your voice not being picked up or Steam using the wrong microphone or output device for audio, heading up to the voice section is really handy. Heading up to the voice input type, selecting your microphone manually from this list, you can also do a microphone test to be able to hear back to yourself. And you can also choose the exact sound output or speakers from your system that you want all of the Steam games to defaultly use. You can adjust the input gain, which is the volume of your microphone to make it louder or quieter, alongside the output, which is the output going to your speakers. You can choose to change the default preferences for your voice transmission type, whether it be open microphone, push to talk or push to mute. I prefer push to talk and my key is usually a mouse key. In many games which utilize the Steam voice section, you'll also be able to navigate down towards the show advanced section if you're looking for the absolute lowest latency possible, you'll want to turn off echo cancellation and noise cancellation, but your microphone quality could suffer in game. Heading over to Steam Remote Play, if you do not currently use Remote Play or are looking to use it in the future, I would highly recommend switching this off. Same goes for Steam Broadcast. If you're not broadcasting your games to your friends with inside of Steam, go to the drop down menu under Privacy and switch this to Disable. Once that's completed, we can head over to the top right hand side and select the exit icon. With all of the main settings then completed, we can then jump into a few last per game settings. Settings. For any game you're looking to potentially turn these on or off for, simply right click on the game, then navigate down to properties. Start with the general section. Once again, we have the Steam overlay. I have no intention of using that whilst playing Borderlands 3, so I'm going to be switching this off. If you want to clear any previous browsing history or tabs that are automatically opened, as Steam now has a live browser instance where it actually remembers and automatically opens up those browsers in the background that you may have been utilizing the last time you were playing that game, you'll want to go ahead and delete this. You can also turn off the option for desktop game theater while Steam VR is active. Last but not least navigating down to the controller section. If you're not utilizing a controller for that game or not looking to use one in the future, head over to the use default settings and select disable Steam input for each individual game you have no interest in using a controller for. And last but not least, for many games in your Steam profile, they may automatically be downloading DLC and installing it when you install the game, which you may have no intention of playing or you might be done with. For many games on Steam, right click on them, navigate down to the DLC section where you can then find installed DLC. On Borderlands 3, I have the director's cut installed and I have no intention of using this content. And on the right hand side, I can see that it's 10.8 gig in size. I have no interest in using it, so I'm just going to deselect this. Once I press exit out, you'll see that Borderlands now has an update, which then going to remove that content, and it's now freed up 10 gig of space on this system without having to do anything. And that's the 2023 Steam client completely optimized. Let me know of your thoughts on the brand new UI in that comment section down below, and if you preferred the older version or the newer version. And if you're serious about optimizing your system, please do check out the description down below, where you can find all of my sorted playlists for Nvidia, Intel, AMD, CPU optimizations, GPU optimizations, and everything in between, where it's easily accessible so you can dive into a certain system optimization and get the absolute best performance possible. But if you're looking for further optimizations and you're not quite sure where to go next, check out one of the two videos on screen now, and I'll see you guys over there.